Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's talk about another common A-B testing question in data science interviews. This video is the last video in a series of videos on top A-B testing questions in data science interviews. In the previous videos, I shared two topics. One is about sample size estimation, and the other one is about metric selection. Check them out if you haven't done yet. In product case interviews, you will need to be able to articulate the selection of a randomization unit from experiment. So in today's video, we are going to talk about choosing a randomization unit from A-B test. We'll go over what is a randomization unit, what are some common use randomization units, as well as what are some considerations when choosing a randomization unit. Let's dive right into it. First of all, what is a randomization unit? The term may sound a bit intimidating, but a randomization unit, aka unit of diversion, is who or what we randomly assign to each variant or group of an A-B test. Selecting the right randomization unit is critical because it impacts both user experience and what metrics we can use in an A-B test. You may think that randomization units are simply users because in many experiments we refer to the randomization process as assigning users to each group. But this description is not accurate. It's actually a bit more complicated than it initially appears, and it will become clearer when we talk about different options of randomization unit. Let's start our discussion by defining the common use randomization units. In practice, user ID is one of the most common use randomization units. It's fairly easy to see why, right? Using the user ID ensures a consistent user experience and allows for long-term measurements such as user retention, and the user's learning effects. But there are other randomization units suitable for different scenarios in A-B tests. Here are some examples. A cookie, an event, a device ID, or even an IP address can also be used as randomization unit. Each of these options have some pros and cons. Let's look at them one by one. User ID, as we mentioned earlier, are stable across time and platforms. Once a person registers on a website, there will be a unique user ID attached to their account, which is a huge pro of using a user ID as a randomization unit. But one thing to note is that a user ID can be used to review a person's identity. Consequently, we need to be mindful of confidentiality and security issues when using user ID for identification purpose. Another issue to note is that the identification of registered users generally requires the user to log in to their account, which is the limitation of user ID as a randomization unit. Unlike user IDs, cookies are pseudonymous IDs that are specific to a browser and a device. If you don't know what web browser cookies are, they are small footprints that are automatically assigned and stored in a browser when you log on to a website. Because cookies are anonymous, they are not identifiable. But the users can clear cookies, and the cookies do not persist across browsers or platforms. For example, if you change your web browser from Chrome to Firefox, the cookie will change. Cookies can also expire, so you can think of them as temporary user IDs. So cookies are not persistent across platforms. Another kind of randomization unit is an event. An event, such as a page view or a session, represents a finer level of granularity than a user ID. In other words, one user can be connected to many page views or sessions. Using page level randomization, every page visit is considered a randomization unit. This randomization method is simple because it does not require users to log on, nor does it distinguish between actions from the same or different users. Session level randomization can also be used. Usually a session is defined as a continuous period of activities. For instance, you might log on to your Facebook account, check out your friends' activities, and then close your browser. Typically, the session will expire after 30 minutes of inactivity. That's one session. The next day, if you log on to your Facebook account again, it's considered a new session. Session-level randomization treats every session as an independent occurrence. Accordingly, one user can be assigned to different variants from time to time. Because there are typically more page views and sessions than users, using an event as a randomization unit provides more units and it gives us more power to detect smaller changes. However, it may also lead to inconsistent user experience. So if the change is visible to users, it's better to not use an event as a randomization unit. Another common use randomization unit is a device ID. It is an immutable ID associated with a specific device. 
Device IDs are only available for mobile devices, so they are mostly commonly used as randomization units for A-B testing of changes in mobile apps. Now, we know some commonly used randomization units, but how do we choose which one to use in a given scenario? The first consideration is ensuring a consistent user experience. You don't want users to experience one design today and another design tomorrow, because it will likely make users very frustrated. Therefore, for changes that are visible to users, like changes in color, button sizes, and the layout of a page, or other major design changes on a website, we should use a user ID or a cookie as a randomization unit. Conversely, if the change is not visible or easily noticed by users, then the selection of a randomization unit depends on what we want to measure. Examples include website performance changes and changes in backend algorithms. For instance, if we want to compare the latency of loading web pages, then we might use a page view as a randomization unit. We can also consider session level or page level randomization. Page level randomization may be more powerful than user-level randomization because it can reduce the variance in page-level metrics. But if we want users to see what happens and track their experience over time, a user ID is also a good option. Another related consideration is a comparison of the coarseness of the randomization unit and the unit of analysis. As we have mentioned earlier, the unit of analysis is the unit of your metric. The general recommendation is that the randomization unit should be at least as coarse as the unit of analysis. Let's consider a few examples to make this recommendation clear. For example, let's say we want to analyze clicks rate, in which case the unit of analysis is a page view. If we want the randomization unit to be a user, let's ask ourselves whether a page view or user is a coarser or bigger unit. Because many page views can be connected to a user ID, the user ID is a coarser unit. So we have met the conditions of this recommendation. Notice, however, that in this case, we may have an issue with the previous consideration, which is variability. This example demonstrates the importance of all considerations in designing the randomization unit. Now, suppose our randomization unit is a page view, and we analyze user-level metric, such as average number of clicks per user. Here, a page view is less coarse than the number of clicks per user, and the user's experience is likely to include a mix of variants, some pages in the control group and some pages in the treatment groups. That will make computing user-level metrics meaningless. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have found this video helpful. Remember, I have a free product case interview cheat sheet to help you with interview preparation. You can grab it by going to datainterviewpro.com. In this series of videos, we talk about the top three A-B testing questions in data science interviews. They are sample size estimation, metric selection, and choosing a randomization unit. Understanding these questions and answers is important and is a good starting point. But you need more than that to ace data science interviews. That's why I recommend you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos where I talk about how to approach data science interviews as well as how to learn data science in general. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will see more content like this. Bye, guys.